YouTube, Sarkyo here, and this is a very common deck of cards. Now, how many cards are there in this? Well, it's 52, of course. But not only are there 52 cards in this, but there's also a much, much larger number hidden within them. Because although you only have 52 cards here, how many different combinations of these 52 cards can you get if you shuffle them randomly, if you just take them out, put them there? How many different combinations can you get? 100,000? A million? Not even close. The answer is the factorial of 52. The factorial of any number is just found by getting that number and multiplying it by itself minus 1. So basically you get 52 and then times it by 51, then by 50, then by 49, until you get to that number times 1. And that creates a huge number, an unimaginably large number. And the amount of possible combinations gained through the factorial of 52 for a deck of cards is 8.07 times 10 to the 6, 7. So, just how large is this number? Well, here's a way that I can show it to you. Let's say you have a timer that will run for that many seconds. Now with this timer, what you're going to do is go all the way around the equator of the Earth, but you're going to be rather slow. You're only going to be taking a step every billion years. But once you've gone all the way around the equator, you take a drop of water out of the Pacific Ocean, and then you repeat the process. Once you've gone around the equator enough times to have emptied the entire Pacific Ocean, you should then lay a sheet of paper, refill the Pacific, and repeat the process. Once this stack of paper reaches the sun 93 million miles away, what you then do is you look at the timer. It's barely changed. It was this at the start, and now it's this. Barely a difference. Now, what you do is you get that pack of cards you brought with you, and every time you get a royal flush through randomly shuffling them, you buy a lottery ticket. Specifically, it's a Powerball lottery ticket, and when you win it, which is around 100 million, the chance of winning it, what you will do is take a grain of sand and put it into the Grand Canyon and then repeat the entire process from earlier, might I add. Once the Grand Canyon is completely full of sand, what you will then do is take an ounce of rock out of Mount Everest. And once Mount Everest has been completely removed from the map, you will repeat this entire process. Now, the first time you've done this, once Mount Everest is gone, the number has gone from this to this. It still barely changes, still to the power of 6, 7. So you barely made a difference to the number. And only after repeating this entire process, from going around the equator of the planet to removing Mount Everest 255 times, will the timer have actually reached zero. That is how many numbers are stored in this rather small deck of cards.